minutes away. You know, it's like we're tired. It's late in the day, but like it's not far. We're almost there. But then you tend to kind of easily forget. Yeah, but what about the other six miles to get back to your car? Like that's not nothing. I feel like it's really easy to forget about that element of a hike because you do get that kind of tunnel vision to get to the summit when you got to look at what's after the summit. And sometimes that is the hardest part of the day, especially when you're already fried and there's that many miles until you're ultimately at your car. Um, exactly. Yeah. I, I, I can, I've 100% been there. And, uh, fortunately I've also lived to tell the story and that everything worked out. Okay. But easily those situations can go, go South very quickly. So looking back now, you know, hindsight, what would you say that you guys did that was the correct decision? And what would you guys say that you probably should have made some decision at some point? I'm sure you've probably replayed this a thousand times in your head. Yes. Yeah. uh, At least a thousand times. Um, I think uh, starting on a positive, I think the very first thing that we did right and we continue to do right is having that emergency plan and having that information um, available to you know our loved ones we talked about that earlier in the episode that is so key it's so important because in this situation we didn't need any real help but who knows about the next situation right mm-hmm. it could have things could have turned out completely differently you know, we could have twisted an ankle or fell down the, the rocks in the Panther Brook. And, and the situation would have been 100% different. So having that emergency plan is always the right thing. It's something we continue to do um, regardless of the trip we're going on, how long we're going out, um, what the distance is. It's, it's always in place. Um, and another thing is we did stop before we made too many terrible choices, right? I, I won't say too many terrible. We stopped before anything bad happened. And and thankfully, again, I, I give major props to Mark. His his level head, his calm, cool, collected behavior. He he reevaluated the situation while I was I won't say in a panic, but I was definitely in that mindset. Too much concern about, you know, my wife and kids versus my own safety and and making the right choices. So um, I I think hiking with people you trust to make those types of decisions is also a very good choice. What would we do differently? Um, I think I already mentioned it. Don't stop paying attention to your pace. um, And and always know that regardless of how much history, uh, historical data you have, uh, sometimes things don't go according to the plan. So it's always... It's always important to keep that in mind. And and if you're paying attention to that pace, you can make good decisions at at regular intervals. You know, you reevaluate the situation and and figure out what the actual best idea is. Um, And, you know, at that particular trip, I think, is the one where I learned the valuable lesson to know when to turn around and come back another day definitely a lesson worth worth learning because it's easy to get that that sun, tunnel vision to the summit 100 percent. that's a yep. great lesson so now real quick a couple quick final questions uh i'm gonna i'm gonna tailor these to your specific uh situation so what i like to ask people what do you always keep in your backpack but let's go through again really quickly what were the things in your backpack on this trip that helped make the overnight you know, helped you survive the overnight. Hit me with those sure. items again. Okay, so uh, we had a water filter kit, which is huge, especially um, on any trip. You never know when you're going to need water. Um, we had uh, paracord, which is, you know, nice heavy-duty line. It's not climbing rope, but it's definitely good for a lot of things. Uh, headlamps, which are huge. Yeah, emergency blankets, um, the, the Mylar solar blankets. Uh, I usually keep two in my pack now. Um, it's just, you know, that's what it's been like. And uh, it's important to have more than one just in case you run across somebody who needs help. And you can kind of, you can, you can be that help that they need. And obviously, you know, the mainstays are map and compass. And now, now my Garmin inReach. <laughs> if I had my inReach at the time, you know, uh, we probably could have avoided calling the Rangers and worrying them. 
but now now that's part of my my kit not probably absolutely you would have avoided that because you would have been able to send your wife those text messages saying we're okay we have to stay the night talk to you in the morning you know that that little text message can go can go so far so another reason that you know that gps especially if you're out hiking a lot man it is it is worth every penny worth every penny now my next question what makes the adirondacks unique in your mind you've spent a lot of time there what uh in your mind what makes it such a special spot uh, I really love the history of the Adirondacks. I mean, obviously the beauty is there, um, but the, it's such a historically rich part of the world. Um, I, I think when I'm out on the trails, I think about the thousands of years of like native peoples who survived and thrived in the Adirondacks with its rugged terrain, uh, with the crazy weather, um, so many different, uh, predators and other wildlife in the area it's it just i I love to think about how people made it work there Mm -hmm. and then like to fast forward to like the uh the 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 beginning of america and how uh you know the logging and mining and tanning operations throughout the park in the in the uh, late 18th and early 19th centuries like those they played huge roles in how america expanded and how you know we you rebuilt after the Civil War. That's sure. very, very cool. And um, I mean, New so York City it, was built from the Adirondack Mountains, so it's like it's pretty wild to think about that. Yeah, it's it's bananas, and, and I think you know one of the the most important and um, at least to me and unique things about the Adirondacks is that uh, it's it's an amazing example of like how environmental preservation and conservation can have a positive impact on the world. Very cool. And my final question, why do you hike and why do you like to spend time outdoors? What's the reason for you? Um, actually it's changed over the years. Um, at first it was the thrill of peak bagging. You know, the summit views are, uh, super addicting, right? Mm-hmm. You get on top and you can see forever. And that's, that's a high that you, you want to kind of go back to on a regular basis and it's still very important to me but uh, after the thrill of peak bagging I, I then started really focusing on the health benefits mental and physical um, and I liked to challenge myself to difficult things you know can I do this is it is it is it hard and can I do it and that's awesome these days um, I love exploring uh, I love relaxing and um, you know with my YouTube channel uh, I, I record my adventures in the hopes that it actually inspires other folks to kind of get outside and do something awesome. That's why I end my videos that way every week. Very cool. And so that leads me to my last thing. Where can people find you online? Yeah, you can find me on Facebook or Instagram. It's at ADK Woodswalker, one word. And um, you can check out the YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash ADK Woodswalker. All right. And there you have it, folks. A complete, unplanned overnight story in one of the most remote ranges in the Adirondack Park. A lot of very good information and a fascinating story today from Mr. Jay Morrison. Check out his YouTube channel, ADK Woods Walker, for tons of great outdoor content. And I think that's going to do it here on this summit session, and I hope you picked up a few tips and tricks on what to do and how to prepare for the very real possibility of having to stay the night in the woods Thanks to Jay for coming on the show, sharing his story, and thanks to all of you for listening. Find me on social media at 46 of 46 podcast or email me 46 of 46 podcast at gmail.com if you have any questions or topic suggestions or mountains you want to hear about. I'd love to talk. Keep checking back every Friday for new mountains, new stories, new guests, and new episodes. Remember to always leave no trace, do the rock walk, and if you carry it in, carry it out. Everything, every time, banana peels and all. See you on the trails, folks. Pure ADK is an online community and lifestyle brand that creates Adirondack-inspired apparel and goods. They're all about sharing their adventures and creating quality products that are a reflection of the outdoor lifestyle and activities we love in the Adirondack Mountains. Whether born and raised an Adirondack native or a frequent vacationer, we all have a common bond. 
those feelings and memories that the Adirondacks evoke in us. As a bonus for listeners of the podcast, they're providing a 15% off discount. When shopping in their online store, use the promo code 46PODCAST to redeem the offer. PureAdirondacks.com. Check it out. 46PODCAST. Pure ADK. Exploration Unbound.